Thank God. I remember the day. Amen. Now, I don't, I don't know what date it was. I remember it's winter. I remember it got dark early. I remember I was lost going to hell. I remember that. Amen. I remember that burden leaving me. Thank God. I remember finally going to bed at night, not having to worry about it. I mean, I mean that was a bad thing for me. I'd go to bed and I'd dream I was in hell. I'd be kicking the walls and everything else. I felt like I'd you say, well, that's just crazy. You can call it whatever you want to. I, I heard a story here a while back is somebody in Christian school and they wanted to pull their young and out, said there's dreaming different things and all that, and said it scared them. I said, you better leave them alone. Amen. Let them stay in there. Let them get under conviction. Let Amen. them find out they need to get saved, born again. Yeah. Thank God. I mean, you might protect them too much. You need to let them get alone. You need to let them get alone with God. Amen. Yeah, man. Mama and daddy can't keep you out of hell, but Jesus can. Yeah, man, they need him. I mean, that's the only thing that'll work. And he does do it right. Thank God. But anyway, it's good to be back in God's. I've walked around here all evening wishing it's 7 o'clock. I'm t- <laughs> I ain't left. I went over there for a little while, and I come back over here the rest of the evening and just pace them back and forth. And I come out here and pace back and forth. And I thought, under God, let's get on with it. I mean, I want to come back to church. And so I appreciate the Lord. I'm glad you're here. Glad Brother Kenneth's with us. And you pray. I wish the rest of them would come back. But I thought, maybe they got enough this morning. And uh, whatever. I bet they don't eat that way. Amen. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll, I'll hush you up, quit meddling. We'll go ahead and get the ushers. We'll come on and receive the offering, and you give the Lord as he blessed you. And uh, anyway, Cole, you come back and help him again if you would. And, and I thank God for I'm glad I'm saved. Thank God I'm glad there's a day I can remember where he come to me. Amen. All right, Brett, you pray for us. Blessings on us, God. We don't deserve it. Lord God, you're good to us. And Father, you're good to the just and the unjust, Lord. It rains on all. And Father, I pray now that you just bless us, Lord, throughout the day, throughout the week. God, Lord, we realize perilous times are coming. Lord, the end times, Lord God, may be near. God, I'm glad we're saved. Thank God that we're washed in the blood. Thank God we're seated in heaven. It's our only hope. God, it's a good hope. It's a blessed hope, God, and we thank you for that uh, tonight. God, pray that you'd give us strength and encouragement in the Lord, and we'll thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Don't you reckon that'll be a good day? <laughs> Amen. I mean, it's hard to even talk about that. Oh, Lord God. I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. I mean, just to see that. Thank God. I mean, the thing about it is to be privileged to be part of that. Just to be in his presence like that. I mean, that's going to be something, ain't it? I mean, there's not words to describe it, as far as I'm concerned. Thank God. I mean, we just have to stand like she said and said, the half hath not yet been told. And I think it'll be just like we've said often, our vocabulary is not broad enough to tell it. Thank God. And Paul come back and said, it's unlawful to tell anyway. Thank God. I think that's the most disappointed he'd probably ever been when he had to come back. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I've seen this thing. You know, you don't know what to believe and what not. Some of these things, you, uh, there's this fella, uh, he gave this testimony I seen the other day and said he, he was dead for so many minutes and all that, and he come back trying to tell about what heaven looked like and all that. And, I mean, it was, like, it was way out there, like 20 minutes or whatever. And I thought, under God, I I believe I'd have just stayed if I could have. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's what Paul said uh, when I read it this morning. Whether in the body or out, he said, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they said he was gone. And he said, I've seen it. And I thought, well, Lord God, I believe I'd have just stayed out. Don't put me back in that earthen vessel. Lord God, I mean, he then went over and seen the new one, had to come back to this one. Oh, Lord, that's something, ain't it? But great God, I mean, I guess he's doing pretty good. He knows what he's got coming, if it's all. I know, he don't know no more than I do. Amen. I've got one fashion like the Son of God. He don't know no more than I do. Thank God. <laughs> Holy. Hallelujah. Y'all come on. You pray for them. Let them say. I want to say this. The Lord's good. Amen. For Job, every rose in his garden had faded. All the flowers in his life had withered away. But Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and the roses for Job, they all bloomed again. The roses will bloom. The roses will bloom again. Some morning they'll all bloom again. No matter how long your winter has been, your winter has been. When you see It's gone to come springtime, a springtime again. It was dark for old Jacob when they brought him that coat. And it seemed to him that Joseph was dead. But things got brighter when he saw the wagons coming. And the roses for Jacob, they all bloomed again. See the 
runs a Sharon in that beautiful garden. It's gonna come springtime again. Springtime again. The disciples went with Jesus his last trip to the garden. And they were there when they led him away. It seemed every rose they had died on Calvary. But come Sunday morning, they all bloomed again. The roses will bloom. The roses will bloom again. Some morning they'll all bloom again. No matter how long your winter has been. Your winter has been. When you see the rose of Sharon in that beautiful garden, it's gonna come springtime again. Springtime again. Oh. 
What a glorious day. When Jesus wipes the tears away. And he bids me come sit at his feet. All sorrow will pass when I reach on. things down here, but thank God when you cross over, they're past. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'll tell you what, come on up here, Brother Kenneth. I'm going to let him preach tonight. But I ain't going to let you off that easy. I said this morning, yeah, come on. I'm going to be easy on them tonight. <laughs> There's two sides to this thing. This morning I was preaching on being thankful. You know what the other end of it is, don't you? Murmuring and complaining. Yeah. You're going to do one or the other. Right. Now you know why I'm going to be easy, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you're either going to be thankful or you're going to murmur and complain. Yeah. 
That's it. Yeah. yeah. And if you go on to read that, now you won't find that too much in that 105th Psalm, but you go on 106th and, and you'll find it where the, that's where they abode. And let me say something. They didn't have nothing to complain about. I mean nothing. Not a thing. In fact, I read something I never even paid no attention to before. Do you realize that he, there's two, about two million of them people went through there? And the Bible said they wasn't even one of them feeble. You, can you imagine that many people? They ain't even sick. And that, that helped me because I thought, you know, if we'd spend more time thankful, we probably wouldn't be near as sick as we think we are. You wouldn't be near as bad shape, but it wasn't until they got murmuring and complaining, every one of them ended up sick or going through things and all that. Now, you're going to be glad I let him preach. <laughs> and I am, but that'll help you. There ain't but two things you're going to do. You're going to fuss or you're going to be thankful. And I said this morning, I wanted to grow up to be thankful. That's what I want to do, grow up to be thankful. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. Amen. Amen. I, I, he walked in back there, and I thought about this, and he said it. He said, all of them that I was raised up with preaching, he said, they about all gone. And I thought, I thought I want him to preach because I want to glean from the ones that we do have with us. I mean, I appreciate him. And I appreciate the Lord still using him, hanging in there, wanting to go. Ain't many wanting to go, and he still does. Pray that God put many, many more miles under you. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Thank you. Amen. I, I hope all of you will pray like that for me. Amen. Uh, I, I agree with Brother Mike about that fellow went to heaven there for about 20 minutes, wasn't he? That's what they said. I believe if I'd have been him, I'd have stayed there too. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy what I'm doing. I do. I I love I love what uh, God called me to do. Uh, to try. I love to try. Yeah. Amen. I'll put it that way. Yeah. And once in a while, the Lord just takes over, and it, everything's okay then. Amen. But uh, I want to say it's good to see all of you. I stopped by a couple of times to see you, and nobody here. And uh, but anyway, we've all had our ups and downs here lately, haven't we? But uh, that's okay. The Lord helps us even in the down times. Amen. When you stop and think about it, he may be doing more for us then than uh, the other time. You can't never tell. And uh, there's a lot of things I need, still need to learn, that's for sure. And uh, I know the Lord's not going to give up on us. He said he would. He said he'd be with us all the way. Amen. He's not going to leave us in the middle of the stream to drown. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. He's going to take Praise us all the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I don't know how near I am, but uh, I'm nearer today than I was yesterday. Amen. 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 My salvation is, is almost finished now. Thank God it won't be long. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I've headed to, but you all of us will admit there's ties here that we all love. Yeah, that's right. And uh, there's people that we've met along the way yeah. that, you know, the parting will be sad. Amen. 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 I was thinking coming over here, if you don't mind me saying a word or two. Uh, Coming over here, I, was, I always, uh, when the trees, before the leaves get on the trees, I see that steeple up there when I'm coming in. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. It brings back so many memories. Yeah. And uh, uh, even, uh, I think Rosemma took a picture of me one time up there on that steeple. And uh, I used to, I could get up there and scoot out that comb, paint that thing. I don't know how many times I've done it, but anyway, I had uh, Preacher Potter I come over here one day, and he asked me. He said, you think you could paint that steeple? I said, I don't know whether I can get up there or not. <laughs> he, said, 
uh, looked at my shoes. He said, I don't believe you can with them shoes on. So he found me a pair of shoes, and uh, I got me some paint and a roller and a brush, and here I went up. I come up this valley here and went out to Cone. And I got it done two or three times, and uh, I wrote them a took a picture of me up there. I don't know whether I still got it or not. She gave it to me one day. Things like that mean a lot to me. Yes. Brings back so much. Yes. Amen. And uh, I'm just thankful for all of you. Thankful to the Lord for all of you. Amen. 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 You've all been a blessing to me. All of you. And Brother Mike is, is just a good-hearted fella. That's about all I can say. I believe God's got his hand on him. And uh, he, he's hard on those in him. Yes, yes. He's hard as any. Amen. And uh, Stephanie's joined up with him, and she's just about as much in it as he is, I believe. Amen. And that's good. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. Nothing better than serving the Lord. Now, I can say that Amen. from my heart. I mean, there's ups and downs and heartaches and trials and all of that involved. We all know that. But my Lord, what's that compared to what's ahead of us? You know? Just, you know Paul, Paul even told us that there's nothing to compare with what the suffering here that's what's over there. And it don't matter much what we'll have to go through, and nobody knows but the Lord what all it is. We've all been out to the cemetery with our loved ones. And it's hard to leave, to walk away. But God gives grace. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I never will forget that old fellow that come to the church, first church I pastored. He was coming there with, and uh, was going to have service. And uh, he ran over his daughter uh, before he left, backing out of his driveway, he ran over his daughter. And they had to amputate her leg, all of that. Boy, it was hard, but he come on. And when it come his time to get up, here's what he said. He said, uh, God has given me grace, new grace today that I've never needed before. Amen. That's what he said. Amen. Now I got to thinking about that. God's got grace for every need. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. When it comes time to walk out to the cemetery, he'll give you grace. Amen. He'll give Amen. you grace. Amen. He'll give you strength. And we've all, most all of us, I'm sure, has experienced that. But the only thing you'll ever go through that he's not already been through. Amen. He's cleared the way. Just walk on with him. That steady walk. First John chapter 1. I'm going to preach something tonight. You may never speak to me again, but I'm going to preach it anyway because the Lord laid it on my heart. <laughs> Woke me up early this morning and uh, put this in my mind and in my heart. And I didn't, I never have tried to preach on this before. I'll be honest. I don't know why he gave it to me, uh, really. But they, he did, and so I'm going to give it to you. And then he laid it on my heart to come over here tonight. So I'm assuming it's for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In First John chapter 1, and uh, beginning in verse 6. I want to read the, uh, the verse 6 through the remainder of the chapter. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us 
from all sin. A double L, all sin. Verse 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. A double L again. Verse 10 says, If we say, now listen carefully to what the Word of God is saying. If we say, that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Isn't that something, Lord? The subject here is sin. Before there's any fellowship, there must be a cleansing of sin. Now here in this verse, It says in verse 6, if we say. Now there's lots of people in the world that makes a profession with no possession. I believe that with all my heart. There's all kinds of people in this world that has under high emotional stir or some form or fashion or other run down an aisle and said that they got born again of the Spirit of God, but they didn't. Amen. Are you judging, preacher? No, I'm I'm just going by what God's Word says. If we say, and I've seen the fruit of some of it. Amen. If we say, now that is a profession uh, that people make. If, If we say that we have fellowship with God, with Him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Now, children, I mean, it's just as A, B, C. Here's a person that comes to an altar and says, I have received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and this is not making me a judge. I'm just quoting the Word of God. And you'll see them the next day down at the liquor store, at drunk, wanting more liquor. You know there's something wrong somewhere. How do you know? Because God wouldn't do such a thing as that. Amen. Well, if we say we have fellowship with Him, now, that's not talking about what most of us think fellowship is. Fellowship here is not uh, like a social gathering uh, where we gather and drink a cup of coffee together and have a piece of cake or something like that, laugh and talk about this and talk about that. That's not what the fellowship that it's talking about here is. The fellowship that it's talking about here is one that has in common with God. uh, That has been born of the Spirit of God. Has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Has the Spirit of God dwelling within them. And the Word of God dwelling within them. And the love of God dwelling within them and been born from heaven above. Bless God, there's a difference between saying I'm saved and being saved. Amen? There's a great deal of difference. And I I know, and and I'm not not glad that there's people in the world like that, but there is. And uh, uh, some folks judge Christians by that very thing too. They say, well, if that's Christianity, I don't want it. Well, that, by the way, is not Christianity. That's something else. I don't know uh, what all it is, but it's not Christianity. They haven't been born of the Spirit of God. I can guarantee you that. Amen. Amen. And uh, if we say it and don't have it, you're just hurting your own self. Amen. You're sealing your own destiny when you say it and don't have it. Amen. 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 And that's what some folks do about their sin. Uh, that we inherited from our father uh, Adam. Uh, They they can uh, profess it, but they don't have it. Amen. They're still in their sin. 
Uh, if we say that we have uh, been born again and are not, and walking in darkness that is still in our sin, then uh, we're lying and tell not telling the truth. Because no way is that our God. Amen. But he goes on to say in verse 7, but if we walk in the light, if that is our action, walking in light, not darkness, not in sin, but in the leadership of the Holy Spirit, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, that is, there's no sin about him. There's no darkness about him. Now, if we're children of God, we're going to be like our Father. Amen. Amen. Now, I know, hey, don't, don't get off key here with me now. I know that mostly, most of the time we're just as mean as the devil. I'm not talking about this old flesh. It's, it's, it's going back to the dirt where it come from. But I'm talking about that inner man that's been born of the Spirit of God. That one day, bless God, is going to leave out of this old tabernacle that you're looking at and going to be with God. He does not sin. Amen. Amen. I don't care what you say. He does not. He's born of God. He's washed in His blood. Amen. Amen. But uh, ain't that old man you're living that he's living in, ain't he been born again? No, sir. He just as mean as he ever was. Amen. And you know it's the truth as well as I do. Bless God, he'll be out yonder somewhere tomorrow and, and you don't know what he is. Amen. Amen. But if there's something in here, the Spirit of God is going to correct you when you're wrong. Amen. He said he would. And all of these things, but if we say it, saying's not enough. Sin is not enough. God's got to do it from above. Amen. The Spirit of God has got to do the work in here. Paul told those Philippians, he said, I'm confident that what's in you, what has been wrought in you, will continue until the end. Amen. Amen. There's a difference, children. There's a difference in saying it and being it. Amen. All right, some try to cover it up. Then in verse 8, listen to this. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Then he said in verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar. Oh. And his word is not in us. Amen. Now, children, whether people want to uh, confess it or not, we didn't do anything to, to become a sinner. We were born a sinner. Amen. That happened through Adam. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. But I was born that way. Amen. And to deny that is, is to call God a liar. Because the Word of God says so. Amen. Amen. Amen? Well, let's just go out to the cross for just a moment. And let's stand here at the foot of the cross before he, His Spirit returns to, the, to heaven. And let's ask Him, why are you dying on the cross? Why are you going through all of this suffering? Well, I'm dying for your sin. Huh? Amen. Wasn't that what the Word of God says? Yeah, right. That He died for our sin. Amen. Amen. Well, to say that we have no sin is to make God a liar. Amen. 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 Plain and simple. I, I didn't see that till just today, this morning when He woke me up. Well, my God, uh, to say, to stand and tell people that, that I wasn't a sinner when I was born is to call God a liar. Hey, and God forbid that I ever do such a thing. Well, I was born a sinner. It was a sin nature in me that, that sinned over and over and over. Amen. 
And when I got born again, bless God, it, it didn't get, this old man didn't get any better. But the, oh, the new man in did. Amen. Bless God. He saved the uttermost as we sung. And as the old preacher used to say, from the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen. I'm saved. I am saved. Amen. But I've never denied. God's my witness. I've never denied that I was a sinner. No, sir. Did you know before God, the Holy Spirit convicted me of sin, I'd read the Bible. My daddy read the Bible to me. I believed it. I believed it then. And I knew that what God said was true. Well, I'd never be guilty of calling God a liar. No, sir. But a lot of people do. I was telling Brother Mike in here a while, just a while ago about a man I met one time. Hadn't, didn't know him. I never had seen him. We got to talking. I said, are you a Christian? Born again Christian? Oh, he said, I was born a Christian. I said, do what? I said, you mean you was a born, you're a born again. Oh, no, no, I don't mean that. I mean I was born a Christian. I said, your Bible don't read like mine. I read where we were all born in sin. And we're all sinners. All have sinned. Solomon even said there's not a man that lives that hadn't sinned. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. And so there's some that makes God a liar and says, I don't have any sin. Well, all of those Jews said that to Jesus. Why, well, we've never been in bondage. We've never sinned. We're children of Abraham. Well, so what? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You've got to be a child of the king before you ever get in heaven. Amen. That's what he told Nicodemus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The ruler of the Jew, you must be born again, Nicodemus. Amen. But I'm a ruler of the Jew. So what? Well, I'm a good person. Lord, I do this, I do that. I've even got a pen for perfect attendance at church. <laughs> well, so what? I mean, that's a good thing. I, I, won't, I won't downgrade that. That's, that's a good thing to be in church every Sunday, and you ought to be. Amen. <laughs> but anyway... Some people say, I don't have any sin. I'm not a sinner. Well, they're lying. Yeah. Amen. And they're making God a liar. Amen. Whew, that scares me Amen. that anybody would have that much brass yeah. Amen. and gall to stand up in the face of God and call him a liar. And can you imagine standing there at the foot of that cross and him bleeding and dying and, and for our sins and saying, I don't have any sin? Lord, have mercy on us. But that's what some do. That's what some do. It says so right here. If we say, and you can say it all along, and until you're blue in the face, but it's not going to change the sin in your life. Amen. 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 There ain't a thing short of the power of Almighty God that's going to change a sinner. The blood of the Lamb. Without blood, there is no remission. Amen. Amen. If we say. Now, third thing about people do with their sin, and I'm glad of this one, verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There it is. Brother, I mean, he done it. I didn't. He did. I don't claim no responsibility for anything that God has done. Amen. And because he does everything right, there's no wrong in him. And that day that I walked in the, 
Calvary Baptist Church over here in Johnson City. I didn't know what was going on. Shut down right on the back pew, right back to, uh, to the back. Hadn't much more and stood up when they were singing the invitation hymn and the Holy Ghost started working in here. I didn't know what was going on. Trembling before God, I was trembling. And the next thing I knew, I was coming down the altar right here. And the preacher said to me, he said, son, what, what are you up here for? I said, I'm a, I'm a sinner. I want to get saved. If we confess our sin. Amen. That's what, it, brother, that's what it's all about. Come before God and confess the, uh, the sin. And he's faithful. God's not going to condemn us. He didn't come to condemn us. He come to save us. Amen. 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 And, and all a person needs to do when the Holy Ghost convicts them is come to God and confess it. And he'll save them. Amen. Amen. And he'll cleanse you from all. A-double-L, all. And the song says, where are my sins? They're buried in a Sadducee's grave. <laughs> Amen. Never to rise again. Oh, yes, sir. You're looking at somebody that's been forgiven. Amen. That means the slate's clean. Amen. If you owe a debt, and uh, I mean, humanly speaking, if you owe a debt and you uh, all of a sudden get enough to pay it all, and you go in and you uh, tell the man, you're, I'm here to pay off my debt. Well, sir, uh, I'm glad you're here, but your debt's already been paid. Yeah. What? Yes, it's done been paid. The slate's clean. You don't have no nothing on your record. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mean, yeah, that's what I mean. There's not a thing. It's clean. Bless God, it's all gone. You don't owe anything. Jesus paid it all. Amen. And don't let the devil drag you through the mud telling you what a sinner you are. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, we all know a lot of things, but I'm like the old fellow that God restored his sight and is trying to get, the, uh, the, uh, tell, to get, get him to tell him who it was that done it. He said, I don't rightly know who he was, but there's one thing that I know. I was once blind, but now I see, praise God. Amen. Amen. You fellows was up here singing tonight. You wasn't always up here singing. Amen. You folks that was up here in the choir not always been up here in the choir. Amen. Thank God he he's saved us, sealed us, sanctified us justified us and glorified us it's all in the past it's done it's done that's what he said on the cross it is finished amen sufficient for all that will come all that will believe can be saved aren't you glad that one day the Holy Ghost got a hold of you you walked down an aisle yeah. and confessed unto God that you were a sinner yeah. in need of a Savior. Yeah. He said, I'm yeah. glad you come. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad you come. Yeah. Amen. And the Holy Ghost began to do a work in us and still working in us, and he will until we're home. Amen. Amen. Well, you don't look saved to me. Well, I'm sorry about that. I can't help that. But I, I'm going to assure you, bless God, I've been to Calvary. Amen. 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 And I'm totally dependent upon him. Amen. Wholly Amen. dependent Amen. upon him. Yes, sir. Didn't bring a thing in my hands. That old preacher kept telling me, son, you just get down there and tell God everything you've ever done. I said, I, I was thinking, Lord, is this the way it is? 
And after <laughs> quite a considerable length of time passed, I was still trying to tell the Lord <laughs> all that I'd done. and Couldn't even remember it all. But anyway, one of the old fellows was standing over here against the wall. And they all, all of us called him Tater Black. That's what we called him. He'd come walking over to me. And he said, son, let me tell you how it is. I said, please, just fall over in the arms of Jesus and trust him and he'll save you. You know that works? That works. And isn't it strange how the Lord works in your life? I never dreamed that I'd be right here tonight. Had no idea. My reputation when I was just a little kid, that boy will never amount to nothing. Got no ambition. And they wasn't too far wrong. <laughs> Amen. Maybe on one point here or there maybe, but not too many. Kicking tin cans up and down the street, trying to get into some kind of meanness. All of that. And as the years passed, in the neighborhood that I was raised in, if not every house, every other house was sold white bootleg liquor. And every boy in our neighborhood, except the ones that died before they put them in the penitentiary, was in the penitentiary. I'm telling you before God, it's the grace of God and the grace of God alone that saves us. It's the mercy of the Lord that we're all here tonight. Now, we all say amen. That's the reason why we can have fellowship, because we all have in common salvation. We've all been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Now, I don't know about you, but that fellow that's uh, telling me he's a Christian, he wants to have fellowship, but he wants to go down to, the, down to here or down to there. And I said, well, Lord, we can't have no fellowship. I'm not going down to no triple X movie. Come on. I mean, Lord God, that's not me. I'm a Christian. But preacher, it's not what, I'm not talking about being saved. I'm talking about after you are saved. Amen. 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 You don't want to do those things no more. I don't. I don't know about you, but when God wakes me up in the morning, this is on my mind. And it bothers me when things stop, start popping up that hinders me from getting, getting in the room with the Lord. It bothers me. And I say, hurry up and get it done. And let me get in here. <laughs> Amen. That's my life. That's been my life for over 60 years now. Way over. Isn't it wonderful? Amen. I give God all the glory. Amen. All the glory. Amen. Every bit of it Amen. is His. Amen. Well, uh, go over those verses again. I hope I didn't confuse you so bad that you're in bad shape. How many understand and believe what I've said to you tonight? Amen. That's good. Amen. Thank you. I'm telling you, the, the word, and why in the world I've wrestled with that, that verse for a long time. But it's too, God's word is too clear. If you want to know it, uh, the Holy Spirit will let you know it. It may not come just like that. It may be miles down the road and a few years past. And one day he'll just like that. But I don't know why in the world we don't believe what he says. I'd rather believe it is not, wouldn't you? If we confess our sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
God took that unrighteousness out of me and imputed into me His righteousness. Amen. 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 It said that Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Imputed to him. Put to his account. And that's what's on my account now. Righteousness. Paid in full. Amen. When I stand before God, it won't be to judge my sin because I don't have any. That was judged at Calvary. Amen. He took our sins. In his own body on the tree. Praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm saved. I hope and pray everybody is. And I hope that everybody's not will get saved. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost will come by one day and convict you such a way you can't resist. And come to the Lord Jesus and be saved. Amen. Amen. said he didn't know why we couldn't believe it I think brother Steve said one time and it helped me about as good as anything as far as my behalf I'll put it that way hopefully not yours or whatever but he said we read the Bible a lot of times with preconceived notions and because somebody said it this way we've already got that notion and we can't read it for what it says and especially them verses right there. How many, I mean, I was raised under 1 John 1, 9, you know, which that got everybody to the altar every service, <laughs> you know. So you thought, well, that must be right. But no, he told us, it, they're gone, thank God. I was a sinner, but I don't have it no more. Ain't that good? And I seen it one day, I quit, I quit that. I quit confessing my sins. I did one time. Now I confess Jesus. <laughs> I don't have nothing. I, I, he's all I got to confess. I don't have no sins left. I, I've got a Savior to confess. But see, I mean, we, we, I've done that so many times. I thought, well, this is what this verse means because that's what they said. And I don't even take time to read it for myself. Just already preconceived. Well, that's what it is. But a lot of times... Miss out on a lot of things just by not letting, I like what John says sometimes, letting God read it to you. That's good, ain't it? When he reads it to you, and I mean, it's, well, he, he'll wake you up in the middle, of the, like <coughs> Brother Kenneth said, he'll wake you up reading it to you. Amen. Don't know why it seems. I get more things like that just come to me, just, I ain't even been reading it, but all of a sudden, I'll be somewhere else reading all of a sudden God will make another verse real to me. And I mean, I, when he makes it real, it's real. Wow. Thank God. And you don't have to, you don't have to question it. He's done it. Amen. But anyway, I appreciate, I appreciate Brother Kenneth. I'm glad he's come by tonight. And like I said, I want to glean some of that stuff. I miss some of these older preachers I miss them Lord God and there ain't many left and uh, I appreciate the Lord leaving Kenneth and, uh, Nolan said the other day said we are the old ones what are you talking about <laughs> I said speak for yourself <laughs> but anyway he's right but ain't the Lord good the Lord, he is good. Amen. All right, I'm going to let you stand to your feet. God sure is good to us. Amen. Now I hope you got more than just I say. Amen. Don't leave on I say. Better have him. Not just a profession, but a possession. I said it last week, there's a big difference in letting him move in. He said, I'll come in and take up my abode. Amen. He's not just a Sunday morning, Sunday night, and midweek service God. He'll come in and he'll move in. 
Yeah, take, he'll take up his abode. He wants to live through you. He wants, Lord God, the old man's dead. There's a new man living inside there. Yeah. He wants to, he'd like to tell you what to do. Now, that's the struggle that we have is we want control. That's, that's the struggle that I have. <laughs> With me. That ain't like 